Stop overthinking with 10 Stoic Ways. Marcus Aurelius once said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Are you familiar with the frustration of a mind cluttered with noise, the agony of indecision, or the paralysis by analysis that comes with overthinking? We've all been there replaying conversations, anticipating outcomes, and trying to solve an endless string of what-ifs in our heads. Today we will tackle this challenge head-on with 10 practical stoic strategies to conquer overthinking. If you're looking for ways to break this cycle and reclaim your mental space, make sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe now. Let's dive in. 1. Visualize your overthinking as an external force. Overthinking can sneak up on you like fog rolling in on what was a clear day. It starts as a single worry or idea, but quickly expands until it can knock you off your feet. It's a common struggle in today's fast-paced world, where information hits us like hail in a storm. Our minds get crowded with thoughts of what if, what next, or what could have been. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher king, once said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This brings us to our first technique, seeing overthinking as an external force. This isn't about making an enemy out of your thoughts, but recognizing that these thoughts are not the core of who you are. They are invaders of your peace. Imagine those invasive thoughts as clouds passing over a mountain. You are that mountain, majestic and immovable, standing firm as the clouds drift by. Now how does one fend off these invaders? Stoicism teaches us to observe without engagement. Imagine placing these thoughts in a bubble and watching them float away. This mental exercise doesn't just lessen their weight. It reinforces the understanding that thoughts are transient. They can only disrupt your peace if you hold on to them and give them power. Practicing this visualization creates a mental reflex that can help you detach and let these thoughts go before they build into a storm. As you get better at distinguishing yourself from this barrage of overthinking, it becomes simpler to see that you are not just the sum of your thoughts. This distinction acts as a shield, much like earplugs in a noisy crowd. It's a deliberate continual effort that grows stronger with everyday application. When you notice yourself beginning to overthink, stop and picture the thought as noise unnecessary and separate from who you are. By doing this, you're not only protecting yourself against overthinking, you're also taking back your mental territory and peace, one step at a time. 2. Take control by refocusing your energy. Have you ever caught yourself spiraling down a rabbit hole of what-ifs and doomsday scenarios, replaying the same worries over and over until you're mentally exhausted? It's like having a bunch of browser tabs open in your mind, each with a video playing on full blast, and you can't seem to hit pause. This mental multitasking is a hallmark of modern life, where the pressure to stay on top of everything can lead to a relentless cycle of overthinking. But just like a cluttered desk, a cluttered mind needs tidying up. Redirecting your mental energy isn't just about mental peace, it's about taking back control and quieting the endless noise of what could be. Seneca, another Stoic sage, effortlessly wove wisdom into words when he said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This sage advice serves as the cornerstone for taking control by refocusing your energy. To stop overthinking, start by grounding yourself in the now. Focus on a task, even something small, and channel your energy into completing it. This shift in focus pulls you out of the whirlpool of future what-ifs and anchors you in the present moment. The practical application is simple yet profound. Engage in an activity that requires your full attention. It could be as simple as organizing your workspace, going for a brisk walk, or losing yourself in a book. These acts require the now, not the tomorrow or the yesterday. Commanding your thoughts to align with your actions, you're not just distracting yourself. You're taking command of where your energy flows. Remember, stoicism isn't about suppressing thoughts. It's about managing them. By choosing where to invest your mental energy, you're practicing a form of mental discipline. The goal is not to avoid overthinking entirely, that's an unrealistic expectation. The goal is to recognize when your thoughts do not serve you, and to have the tools to redirect them. It's like training a muscle, the more you exercise this power of refocusing, the stronger and more resilient your mind becomes. You'll find that the once overwhelming tide of overthinking can be tamed wave by wave with deliberate action and presence. 3. Embrace impermanence and practice letting go. Let's face it, our minds often get stuck in a loop, 
rehashing events past or fretting over the future. This is the playground of overthinking, where thoughts become sticky, lingering longer than welcome. It's a challenge that doesn't discriminate. It affects students worried about exams, professionals stressed about presentations, or anyone trying to fall asleep while their mind races at 100 miles an hour. Amidst this mental marathon, we can find solace in the words of Epictetus, who tells us, he who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. Now, while this quote might seem a bit heavy, it's really about the concept of impermanence, which is central to Stoicism. Everything changes, and this includes the thoughts that seem so persistent in our heads. When we overthink, we often cling to our thoughts as if they are permanent fixtures in our lives. Embracing impermanence means understanding that thoughts come and go, they are not eternal. This insight can be a beacon of hope when you feel ensnared by overthinking. Practically embracing impermanence means cultivating a habit of letting go. It's a kind of mental decluttering where you consciously release the thoughts that don't serve you. You could do this by envisioning a river where each thought is a leaf on the water's surface drifting away. Or maybe you see them as clouds, ever-changing, reshaping, and eventually moving on. This visualization not only provides immediate relief, but also instills a deeper understanding that the nature of thought is to change. Making this practice a part of your daily routine can transform your relationship with your thoughts. It's not about forcing them out, but rather allowing them to leave. Letting go isn't giving up. It's an act of courage. It means you're choosing not to let redundant thoughts rent space in your head rent-free. As you get better at this, you'll notice a newfound mental space, a quietness that was always there, just hidden beneath the noise of overthinking. Embracing impermanence isn't just a technique, it's a shift toward a more peaceful and present way of living. Four, create a worry period. It's a common human experience to have worries nagging at the back of our minds, persistent like the hum of a refrigerator, always there, sometimes barely noticeable but unmistakably present. These worries can hijack our thoughts at any hour often, when we're trying to concentrate on work, enjoy time with friends, or even when we're trying to sleep. It's like our mind is a stage and these concerns are the uninvited actors who won't leave. But consider this wisdom from the Stoic teacher Epictetus. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. This quote may seem off track, but it's a bold reminder to prioritize our peace of mind over succumbing to worry and fear of seeming complacent or naive. Creating a worry period is a strategic way to give these concerns their moment on the stage, but only during the encore, not the main act. Set aside a specific time each day, maybe 20 minutes in the afternoon, when you're allowed to give these worries your full attention. During this designated time, dive into your worries, scrutinizing them, understanding their roots, and maybe even jotting them down. What are you really worried about? How likely are these scenarios? What can you do about them? This focus session often reveals that many of our worries are like shadows seemingly large but without much substance. When you face them head on, this process also teaches your mind that there's a time and place for worry, and it's not all day, every day. And then, when the worry period ends, you move on. You've given your worries their allotted time, and now you put them aside. By compartmentalizing in this manner, you can regain control over your day. The goal isn't to stop worrying completely, that's impossible. But by containing your worries, you reduce their impact on your life. This technique is like tidying your mental room, putting thoughts where they belong and enjoying the tranquility of ordered space. You'll likely find that worries lose their power when they're not allowed to roam free, and life becomes a bit lighter, a bit more enjoyable. Five, break down overwhelming thoughts into actionable steps. When overthinking strikes, it can feel like we're carrying the weight of an enormous boulder. The size of our worries seems to match the weight of the world, and we're pinned under the heavy cloud of our own thoughts. This sensation is not unique to us. It's a shared human condition exacerbated in a world that demands high performance in all areas of life, work, relationships, personal growth, and social status. The pressure to excel can paralyze us with indecision and fear. As a guiding light through this fog of overthinking, Marcus Aurelius once offered, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This profound insight forms the bedrock of our fifth technique, transforming overwhelming thoughts into actionable steps. When your mind is racing with a big worry or a complex problem, the trick is to slice it down into smaller manageable pieces, 
ask yourself, what's the very next step I can take? Not all five, 10 or 20 steps down the line, but just the next one. Acting on just one small step may seem trivial, but it's a powerful antidote to overthinking. By focusing on one action, you redirect energy from worrying to doing. It's a bit like untangling a giant knot by working on one small tangle at a time. You aren't dismissing the complexity of your concerns. You're navigating through them with purpose, precision, and patience. The beauty of this technique is in its simplicity and effectiveness. Each small step you take builds momentum, and as you look back, you realize that the boulder of worry is now a pile of pebbles you've crossed over one step at a time. This method teaches patience, resilience, and trust in one's ability to confront challenges head on. Suddenly, what once seemed insurmountable is behind you, and your overthinking is replaced with a sense of accomplishment and clarity. Six, shift your perspective to gratitude. Our minds can be tricky. They often lure us into a maze of overthinking about what we lack, what could go wrong, or what we have yet to achieve. This is a relentless loop that can leave us feeling drained and discontent. Overthinking often stems from a focus on the negatives or the not yet in life, overshadowing the good that's already present. Seneca once said, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This nugget of stoic wisdom is a call to shift our perspective from lack to abundance, from overthinking to gratitude. It's about recognizing the value of the present moment and the many blessings we often overlook when we're busy worrying about what's to come. The practice of gratitude pulls us out of the ruts of our minds and plants us firmly in the rich soil of now, where life is actually happening. To make this shift, start by acknowledging three things you're grateful for each day. They don't have to be grand. They just need to be genuine. It could be as simple as a delicious cup of coffee, the comfort of your favorite hoodie, or a message from a friend. This simple practice can pivot your mind away from the cycle of overthinking and towards a sense of appreciation for what is right now in your life. By anchoring yourself in gratitude, you're not only silencing the noise of overthinking, but also enriching your daily experience. Gratitude magnifies the positive in our lives and can slowly but surely transform our inner dialogue from one of scarcity to one of abundance. Over time, this new perspective can change how you approach life's challenges, turning them into opportunities to further recognize and appreciate what's already good in your world. This isn't just about feeling better in the moment. It's about building a foundation of contentment that can sustain you through the inevitable ups and downs life throws your way. Seven, focus on effort, not outcome. Overthinking is often the result of our mind's dance with the future, its outcomes, its what ifs, and its relentless possibilities of failure and disappointment. This projection into the future can paralyze us with fear as we obsess over the potential consequences of our actions rather than the actions themselves. We live in an outcome-driven society where the end often justifies the means, and this can make us believe that if the outcome is uncertain, the journey is not worth embarking on. Yet a stoic quote by Epicurus provides us with a clear directive. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. Stoicism teaches us to focus on our efforts and intentions rather than the outcomes we can't control. This doesn't mean we should not set goals or aspire to achieve great things, but it does mean that the true value lies in the quality of our effort, the integrity of our actions, and the virtue with which we navigate our path. To apply this technique, whenever you find yourself overthinking about the potential results of your efforts, consciously redirect your thoughts to the effort itself. Ask yourself, are you doing your best? Are you acting with good intent? Are you staying true to your values? This approach is about being fully present in the process, putting in the work, and knowing that is where your responsibility ends. This focus on effort can liberate us from the chains of overthinking. It allows us to be in the moment, to give our best without the heavy shadow of what could be darkening our experience. It transforms our actions from mere steps towards an outcome into expressions of our character and commitment. With this shift in focus, you find that your path is not just a means to an end, but an embodiment of living with purpose, where each step is an accomplishment in itself. The final three strategies open the door to fresh perspectives, empowering you to tap into untapped strengths, foster practical resilience, and handle life's complexities with a sense of balance. Eight, practice voluntary discomfort. Our minds often lead us into a whirlpool of overthinking when faced with potential discomfort or change. 
We play scenarios over and over, trying to predict every outcome, preparing for every possible discomfort. This mental rehearsal can be exhausting, and the comfort zone becomes a mental prison where growth is stunted, and overthinking becomes the warden. Marcus Aurelius once remarked, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. This reflects the stoic practice of engaging with challenges head on, rather than avoiding them. By practicing voluntary discomfort, we can train our minds to handle uncertainty and reduce overthinking. It's about small, chosen actions that take us out of our comfort zones, teaching us resilience and adaptability. To integrate this into modern life, start with something small like taking a cold shower, sleeping without a pillow, or walking instead of driving. Do something that disrupts your normal routine and sit with whatever feelings arise without judgment. This isn't about punishment. It's about showing yourself that discomfort isn't as scary as your overthinking mind makes it out to be. Voluntary discomfort has the paradoxical effect of increasing comfort with the various aspects of life. By routinely stepping into what's uncomfortable, the unfamiliar becomes familiar and the mind learns to quieten. It becomes less reactive to change and more focused on what can be controlled your responses. This powerful shift in perspective not only lessens overthinking, but also builds a core of inner strength that is unshaken by the ebbs and flows of life's circumstances. 9. Reflect on the transience of life. When we're caught in the storm of overthinking, it's often because we've zoomed in too closely on the minute details of our lives, losing sight of the bigger picture. Our thoughts become a tangle of what if this happens or what if that doesn't work out, causing us to lose perspective. This microscopic view can make even the smallest issues appear insurmountable, consuming our mental space and energy. Seneca once wrote, we are not given a short life, but we make it short, and we are not ill-supplied but wasteful of it. This poignant reminder encourages us to reflect on the fleeting nature of our existence. Each moment spent overthinking is a moment not fully lived, a slice of life not savored. Stoicism prompts us to ask ourselves whether our worries will hold any weight in the grand timeline of our life. To counteract overthinking then, we should regularly take a step back and consider our life in its entirety. Recognize that many of the things that consume our thoughts are transient and, in the long run, insignificant. When you feel overwhelmed by your thoughts, pause and remind yourself that life is fleeting. Ask if this moment of overthinking is truly worthy of the limited time you have. By contemplating the transience of life, we naturally prioritize our experiences and concerns. This isn't a call to become morose or indifferent, but rather to cherish the present and to focus on what truly matters. It's a powerful antidote to overthinking because it aligns our attention with the present, enriches our appreciation for the now, and diminishes the weight of future-focused anxieties. Let the ephemeral nature of life not be a source of anxiety, but a canvas on which you paint with the vivid colors of presence and engaged living. 10. Seek wisdom from outside yourself. Our minds can sometimes feel like a maze where each turn leads to more confusion and overthinking. We try to solve a puzzle only to find that the pieces keep multiplying, leaving us feeling stuck. This is the problem of overthinking in a nutshell, a cycle that starts and ends within the confines of our own thoughts often without a clear exit. Seneca, a man celebrated for his wisdom, said, consult your friend on everything, especially on those matters concerning yourself. His counsel may then be useful where your own self-love might impair your judgment. These simple words encapsulate a profound truth that can help navigate the stormy seas of overthinking. Stoicism teaches us that seeking insight from outside ourselves can break the cycle of rumination. It could be the fresh perspective of a friend the impartial advice of a mentor, or the timeless wisdom found in literature. To apply this in a modern context, look for people whose opinions you trust and respect. It could be someone from your circle or a professional with the experience to guide you. Sharing your thoughts with them can help in two ways. It provides clarity as you articulate what's in your mind and opens the door for objective feedback that you may have missed while overthinking. This technique does more than offer practical solutions, it reminds us that human connection is invaluable. When we share our burdens, they often become lighter. This is not a weakness, but a recognition of the collective strength we have as social beings. Let the wisdom of others be the light that guides you out of the shadows of overthinking. With each conversation, you'll find the puzzle becoming easier to solve, not because the problems are any less complex, but because you are no longer trying to solve them in isolation. 
Which of these methods resonated with you? Let us know your reflections in the comments. Today's insights are but stepping stones in our shared path of intellectual growth. If you value the pursuit of wisdom, please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Together, let us persist on this path, constantly seeking the wisdom the Stoic Masters have set before us.